everyone, Cadaver Kelly here, and welcome to The Evolution of Goth Music. So recently I published an informational page to my blog covering this same material. I will link that in the description below. I started out by explaining the punk roots of goth. Now punk rock is not goth music, but a lot of early goth musicians got their start in the punk scene. Punk started in the early to mid 1970s. A lot of you are probably familiar with what punk rock sounds like. Aggressive, simplistic guitar progressions, gritty distortions, politically and socially focused lyrics. A lot of punk music does take the form of political protest anthems. So some notable groups at the time that came out of that punk scene were Sex Pistols, New York Dolls, The Stooges. Of course there were many others, but those are probably some of the ones that the average person may have heard of. By the mid to late 1970s, some punk musicians had evolved their sound to be less aggressive, more experimental, and their lyrics less politically and socially focused. This new sound became known as post-punk. Post-punk is also not exactly goth music. A lot of goth music is considered to be post-punk, but not all post-punk is goth. Post-punk's kind of a larger umbrella than just goth music. So some early post-punk musicians you may have heard of that don't fall into that goth category are The Smiths, Talking Heads, Gang of Four, all of which I still love. A lot of goths still love them, so bands like that that are post-punk or another related genre, not quite goth, I'll call them goth adjacent. I'll still post that kind of music online and you know, these types of bands you may even hear in a goth club. There were also some darker sounding post-punk albums at the time being produced. So bands like Joy Division or Early Work by The Cure or Susie and the Banshees would be kind of that darker side of early post-punk and some will refer to that as proto-goth because although that music was being put out just before the formation of the goth subculture, it was still somewhat influential on that early goth sound. The first wave of goth really kicked off in 1979. That's when the band Bauhaus came onto the scene. They released their debut single, Bella Lugosi's Dead, which is widely considered to be the first goth record. The track is over nine minutes long. Most of the percussion is rim shot work. The guitaring is still somewhat simplistic and it has hauntingly deep vocal work from Peter Murphy and what I described on my blog as morbidly tongue-in-cheek lyrics because even though the lyrics are kind of morbid, they were meant to be kind of like campy and a joke. So a lot of music coming out at the time did start to have that more early goth sound. This was the first wave of goth. It was happening in the UK and Europe at the time. So other bands that fall into that category would be Skeletal Family, Ich Small Deutschland, Specimen. A lot of these bands were playing at the famous Batcave nightclub in London. I do want to point out not all of these bands played the Batcave and not all bands that played the Batcave were goth but the Batcave is one of the more notorious watering holes for goths at the time. At the same time, and this is the early 80s, there was an early goth movement happening over here in the United States and that was called Death Rock. This is kind of the gray area where punk and goth overlap a little bit. Death Rock was a little more close to its punk roots, still pretty aggressive sounding, a little more experimental. So that's kind of the one goth subgenre where there is a little bit of overlap with punk. The next genre that I talked about was new wave. I talked about new wave because of dark wave. New wave is not a goth genre necessarily. New wave took elements of that traditional early post-punk sound and incorporated elements of synth pop. So it did kind of have that post-punk sound but a little more poppy and there was a lot of synth being used at the time. And the darker side of new wave is sometimes referred to as dark wave. Some dark wave is goth and some dark wave 
isn't quite goth. It's one of those situations where some music kind of overlaps more than one category. But a great example of a goth dark wave band in the 80s was Clan of Zymox. I have a lot of respect for Clan of Zymox because they've been pretty consistently producing albums and touring since the 80s. Of course, their dark wave they could kind of roll up into that larger category of new wave. Some new wave bands that aren't goth that you may have heard of are A Flock of Seagulls, Information Society, Indochine. So if you think of cheesy 80s music, you might be thinking of new wave. I happen to love new wave as well. I like a lot of music that is just outside that goth umbrella and obviously a lot of goth music. So that's kind of everything that was happening by the mid 80s and in 1985 the Sisters of Mercy released their debut album First and Last and Always and this kind of set the framework for the modern gothic rock genre. So some more modern sounding gothic rock bands that came out of the 80s would have been the Sisters of Mercy of course. Fields of the Nephilim, Red Lori, Yellow Lori, and you had bands like Two Witches in the 90s putting out gothic rock stuff. You still have great bands like the Cemetery Girls putting out gothic rock stuff today. And even some of those early bands are, you know, back to touring now. I know the Sisters of Mercy are on tour right now. The popularity of goth music has kind of gone up and down in waves, and I think any alternative music subculture is going to be that way but that kind of covers the umbrella of goth music genres and that's kind of how they evolved I do want to say don't get too hung up on what genre is this what subgenre is this if you're just starting out because the more you listen to the music you'll naturally start to gain an ear for it over time and if you're new to goth music and the goth scene, no one's going to expect you to know every band and every album right off the bat. So that about does it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.